While many 3D printers work well for producing strong, rigid parts, flexible parts are often another story. This is often complicated, and in many cases, the materials come with significant drawbacks. As you know, we have been designing and building a pair of fully functional, production-ready snowboard bindings. In the last video, we showed you why we chose to print the structural parts in PA12 with an HP 580 Multi-Jet Fusion 3D printer. PA12 worked great for the binding design, however, I wanted something that would absorb any bumps while riding. To do this, we decided to design our own pads for these bindings. Traditionally, these pads would be made of EVA foam or soft rubber, but producing parts with these materials takes a lot of time, effort, and money. Instead of making these parts with traditional materials, we decided to print these pads directly off of an HP Multi-Jet Fusion printer, but this time out of TPA rather than PA12. We chose TPA because it features a Shore A hardness of 90, which means it is soft enough to perform like we need it to, and it performs well and stays soft at cold temperatures that it will encounter when in use on the slopes. While TPA is flexible, it's still not as soft as a foam or a rubber. To get the properties we wanted out of the base pads while still being able to print them, we decided to incorporate a lattice structure to make them softer. Normally, this would cause a lot of problems, as structures this complex would traditionally require generous amounts of support material or careful design practices to avoid excessive supports, making the process very time consuming. Unlike most other processes, support material is not required to print TPA with multi-jet fusion, so we can simply create the lattice we need to print our parts as they are, no matter how complex. We still need a way to add lattice structures. Materialized Magic software is a great solution to quickly and easily add these to our design. Magix is an additive manufacturing build prep software and was originally developed to help create support structures for SLA and SLS printers. However, it is extremely beneficial for use with HP's line of printers and offers excellent file repair, build packing, and structure generation tools. To create this lattice structure, we imported two STL files into Magix per pad. One represented the base of the pad where the mounting features are, and the other represented the volume that would be latticed. We used Magic Structures tool to select a volume where the lattice structure would be generated. Adjust the dimensions and orientation of the lattice cells and create a lattice structure that we felt would give the right amount of compliance to the pads. Then, we simply combined the parts and exported the final STL to be printed. After we had the material we wanted to print our parts from, and had the geometry we wanted, it was time to print our parts. TPA from Evonik is designed to be printed with the HP 4200. This industrial series printer offers many features including removable build units, fast cooling options, and an external post-processing station to accelerate the printing process. These build units also enable the machine to swap materials as needed. This gives the 4200 a larger material portfolio, including elastomers, and also the ability for higher throughput, which makes it perfect for our application. With all the parts in hand, we are almost ready to test our bindings and put them into production. But we still have one final step left, and that's the post-processing of the bindings to achieve a high quality surface finish. Click on the link below to sign up and watch previous videos and catch up on our journey so far. Stay tuned to see how to apply that surface finish through post-processing and mark your calendars for the webinar where I will be writing these bindings live on the mountain.